What's up everybody, it's Joe here with J. Blake Photo. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about some patent applications that have hit in Japan for Canon cameras that might have some really interesting outcomes for sensors if this tech ends up making it into a Canon camera. Real quick before we jump into the information about these patents, again, I'm Joe, this is J. Blake Photo. And this is my channel where we talk about technology, cameras, action, cameras, drones, everything out there that creators use to create content. I recently jumped back into YouTube uh, after about a year off and uh, my channel's been demonetized, my Facebook account got hacked, I'm starting almost from scratch. Uh, so I would very much appreciate uh, a thumbs up on this video and if you would go and hit subscribe if you think the video is any good or I'm any good or that I'm worth it. Anyway, jumping into the news that we have from Canon and these patent applications. So the first one is in regards to high dynamic range sensors. Quick bit of information about high dynamic range is that within a sensor, within a, a particular pixel, um, you have the basically the lowest amount of energy that the pixel can register and the highest amount uh, before it kind of taps out, right? How much an in, from, from information or energy can it hold? Um, Sometimes we measure that in stops, which is a measurement of how much light. I'll link below uh, if I can find a really good video on how to measure stops. I don't have one on my channel, maybe I'll make one. But the idea is that the wider this range, then you can get more detail in the darkest darks and more detail in the brightest brights. But the problem is, is that when you have an individual pixel that is designed to have this very wide range, of dynamic information, uh, it becomes technically difficult uh, really to do that. Um, and so what Canon is doing in these patents is creating really kind of uh, interesting and creative ways to try to get as much information as possible out of a scene with a camera. Now I will also just kind of stipulate, Canon makes camera sensors not just for uh, cameras that we use, um, you know, that we, we throw lenses on and all that sort of thing, but they also make industrial cameras uh, and automotive cameras, things that are used in various applications. I also want to say that the information that we're talking about here was tipped off initially by Richard over at Canon Rumors, and I'm going to link down in the description to his original article. The basics here are that Canon has placed two patents out there uh, for technologies that they may or may not implement. And the first is a pretty standard kind of run-of-the-mill uh, sensor similar to like what we have in our in our current camera technology. Now right now if you've used a Canon camera you're familiar with the idea of dual pixel autofocus. What this means is that uh, each pixel is kind of divided up into two and those pixels have two focus pixels or th there's a, a kind of a diffraction system by sort of using a measurement to determine how close or far an item is away from it, whether it is in focus. And this first patent uh, includes all of that information and seems to indicate that it is just a traditional dual pixel autofocus sensor. But in addition to the dual pixel autofocus component, it also has kind of a dual pixel dynamic range component, uh, whereas different parts of the pixel are actually separated to accept or to be sensitive in different ways to light. So one that is much more sensitive than the other. So if you think about the one sensor having a range, that if you have kind of two areas of the sensor with two different ranges, you could conceivably spread that out while not running into the technical problems that you have of trying to create that really wide dynamic range for an individual pixel you can actually utilize some of the techniques to create a pixel that is maybe more sensitive in lower light and a pixel that's more sensitive in brighter environments. You put those two pixels together in a series of algorithms and you are able to cobble together information that gives you a much wider range of measurement of energy. Again, uh, interesting, creative, very much uh, in line with what we've already seen from Canon. Uh, it almost feels like they're taking the dual pixel autofocus concept and applying it to dynamic range. Super cool, feels very iterative, but uh, would be a phenomenal improvement for any sensor that we have currently on the market. The second patent that they put in though is a little, a little different. Um, instead of having one pixel, 
Instead of having one pixel or subpixels that can measure different amounts of light, um, it's one pixel that is a regular pixel that is then surrounded by two kind of almost their own subpixels that themselves have uh, very different sensitivities to light. So this is kind of the idea of unitasking the, uh, the light measurement to a separate component of the pixel or its own subpixel, um, as opposed to the standard pixel that's recording color and light information. And remember, the, the pixel that sits underneath the kind of micro lens that diffracts the color away is, is really only getting one color at a time and then measuring the energy within itself. But that energy distribution, you know, from the brightest brights to the darkest darks, that is where the dynamic range comes from. So if you create a subpixel that is able to absorb light at say negative 20 EV in a very, very dark environment, then you could create another one that's just great in the brightest brights and you end up with this huge range to the middle. Who knows if that's possible, but they've put a patent out on it. So I'm really kind of curious if this tech ends up in a sensor in the future, and if we see a huge leap forward in dynamic range. Those are the patents that we've seen as it relates to Canon sensors. Now, we've got another patent that's super interesting uh, and kind of cool, and I really kind of hope that we see it. And it is the ability to move the eyepiece uh, in a Canon camera um, to rotate it. This seems, now that I'm kind of seeing it in action, uh, on this patent application, it seems kind of simple, kind of great. Um, credit where credit's due, I wanna attribute this uh, news post to the folks over at Canon Watch. Um, link down below also for their story. Um, now this isn't a new idea, but it's a new idea in Canon cameras, uh, which is that you can take the eyepiece, uh, the EBF that you would look through, and remember that eyepiece is now no longer attached to a pentaprism like it is in a DSLR where you have this glass that is reflecting light through the sensor uh, or off the sensor that now for me, who as someone who does a lot of um, landscape photography, I don't do a lot of studio portraits in this way, but I could see that being um, another component of it that would be super helpful, is the ability to just kind of look down into the camera. Um, I don't know, that looks, that just feels cool. I can't, I don't always have my camera at eye level. When I'm on a photo adventure and I've got my camera on my tripod, I normally keep carbon fiber tripods that are trying to cut down on weight so they, they don't come up to six plus feet where I can stand up to them and really kind of get in the eyepiece. And so having a camera that can be down at my kind of chest or chin level that I can look into is really nice. I love this idea. And I really hope that this makes it into a new camera very soon, because to be quite honest, this seems kind of like a no-brainer. And I think that as long as it's executed well, it could potentially differentiate Canon uh, in this particular way uh, with this particular view, because I think for landscapes, it's super cool. Um, anyway, so that's the news on patents with Canon. 